Welcome back to part 3 of how to build a quiet high performance PC video overview. We're going to finish building the system, so let's get to it. For those of you who have trouble with these things, this is the video card's box. You will have to open up the box and take out all the accessories and the video card. Comparing it to the motherboard, we can see that it is just a bit over the width of the motherboard, so it's going to stick out a bit once we're done with the installation. This is why it's good to use a chassis like the Xamen MS1000H1, because that case can support full length video cards. We're also going to open up the Thermalrite HR03 GTX VGA coolers box, so we can start installing the aftermarket cooler. This will allow us to silence our video card, because the stock cooler on the video card is quite noisy. So to start out the installation of the Thermalrite cooler, we have to take off the stock cooler. To do that, we're going to unscrew 13 screws on the back of the GeForce GTX 275 video card. If you try taking the stock cooler off, you will notice that it won't work. You also have to remove two small screws on the side of the card. Some people like to blow some hot air over the card to soften the thermal paste on the cooler, but I just like to pull on it a bit harder and it will come off as well. Make sure to unplug the fan connector on the stock cooler. There's plenty of thermal residue that we need to clean off before we can continue installing a thermal right cooler. We're going to use Arctic Clean Thermal Cleaning Solution and Purifier, both which you can find at our store AcousticPC.com. These will totally remove and purify the surface of the GPU, the memories and the other components on the card. So let's start off by applying a few drops of thermal grease remover. We're going to use a soft cloth or a paper towel to remove the thermal compound. Then we are going to add the second solution, which is going to purify the top of the GPU, so our own thermal compound could have the best possible contact between the GPU and the cooler. Now let's remove the thermal residue left on the memory modules and the other components. We're going to clean these parts with Arctic Clean. We have to make sure that these components are well cleaned or else our heat sinks won't attach properly. These are the memory heat sinks. You will need to peel off a thin layer of sheet to get to the sticky part of the heatsink. One thing to note about these is that the layer of paper covering the sticky part is very hard to remove. Don't be surprised if it takes time. Once this is done, you will need to push it well onto the memory modules on the video card. Don't push too hard because we do not want to damage the components on the video card. You will notice that these are just small blocks. We put these on the top because the large GPU heatsinks heat pipes are going to cover up the area, so we have to make sure it fits well. On the sides, we're going to install large heatsinks onto the memories and other components the same way as we have done on the top memory modules. Because our card is a factory overclock card, our board is designed a bit differently from the original design, so we will not be able to use the large piece heatsink next to the power connectors. There is an easy solution for this, however. You can get additional small heatsinks at our store at AcousticPC.com, which will easily cool off the extra components on this card. Next we're going to install the HSI chip heatsink, but first we need to apply a thin layer of thermal paste. We're going to use Arctic Silver 5, just like we did in part 2 of this video for the CPU. We're just going to place the heatsink over the HSI chip, and we're going to push in the 4 pushpin design clips to tighten the heatsink onto the card. Now let's apply some thermal compound on the GPU as well, and let's spread it well. It is recommended to use something like a credit card to spread the compound instead of your fingers, but we personally could not see a difference in performance either way. Now here comes the harder part. You will have to place four rubber washers over the four holes on the edges of the GPU. Then take the HR03 GPU heatsink and remove the protective cover. Place the heatsink on the GPU. Take out the mounting bracket and insert the four screws that come with the cooler. 
place the bracket over the GPU heatsink. On the other side of the card, you will have to screw on the heatsink by using the back plate with the thermal heat pad put in the middle and four nuts that are included in this package. Do it as we show you here in this video. Also remember, if you need a written step-by-step -step installation process of this, you can go to thermalright.com for the installation manual or use the provided installation guide in the package. We recommend doing it that way. Remember this video is only a basic installation guide only and we are not responsible for any damage being done to your hardware. Since changing the GPU cooler in the video card is a lengthy and dangerous process, we recommend having someone else there to assist. Once that is done, you will have to install a 120mm fan to cool down the heatsink on the video card. You will install the fan the same way as we have installed it on the CPU heatsink in part 2 of this video. Next we are going to install our DVD player. We need to locate a free space in our chassis where we can install the DVD player. Once located, we need to take out the front cover so we could place in the player. To do that, we need to remove two screws on both sides of the chassis. The front cover should pop out easily once the screws are out and the DVD player should slide in quite easily. We're going to use Zalman's quick toolless push installation method to install the drive. You just push the button and pull towards you to lock it. Do the same thing on the other side as well, except this time we're going to push away from us to lock it. The drive should be locked now. Just so you can understand how we install the hard drives, we have done the same thing except we have screwed in the drives instead of using the toolless feature the Zalman MS1000H1 uses. Now we're going to install the RAID card in the video card. To do that, first we have to remove the locking mechanism on the back of the case that locks the cards into place. Once that's removed, we will unscrew the areas where we are going to place our cards and take out the slot covers. We're going to install the LSI 3Ware 9754i RAID card in the bottom PCI Express slot because our video card will take up most of the space and cover up all the other PCI Express slots. Once it is tightly pushed into the slot, we will screw in the card where the slot covers previously were. Next we're going to install our quiet GeForce GTX 275 video card in the top PCI Express slot. We're going to screw in the card the same way as we have screwed in the RAID card. Also, we'll place the expansion slot cover to hold the cards into place. Next, plug in the Silent X fan that we installed on the HRO3 VGA cooler into one of the available 3 pin connectors on the motherboard. The ASUS P7P55 Workstation Supercomputer motherboard comes with a Q-Connect adapter which will allow us to easily connect all the case connectors like the power, reset, hard drive LED, power LED and speaker connectors. You just have to match up the connectors on the adapter and then use the adapter to easily plug everything into the motherboard on the bottom right hand side of the motherboard. Next we'll just show you quickly how to plug in the motherboard's 24 pin power connector into the motherboard and power supply. All the other hardware like the video card hard drives, DVD player, and other fans will connect the same way. Please refer to your user's manual on what power connectors you will need and where you will need to connect them. For our SAS drives, we're going to connect the provided SAS connector to the RAID card and the other end to the hard drives. We'll test out the system in part 4 of this video.